Hey guys, Chad here with the Parrotcast. Thanks for listening. If you want to help us out on our podcast, please don't forget to rate us on iTunes and give us a like on YouTube. Now, on with the show. the Paracast, uh, Chad, John, and we have a special guest here today, Yorgev Hirsch. Yes, he's a Israeli by, uh, I guess, nationality, correct? So, born and raised in, in Israel, Yeah. Um, but currently resides in Taiwan. Um, we actually wanted to talk quite a bit to Yorgev. He's, he's been coming to uh, Mark's Place Beer Geek for... How long have you been drinking here? Basically since he opened. Yeah, so <laughs> over, over, over two years probably. One of the foundation members. Yeah, one of the founding me- members. But uh, like, um, we've had interesting conversations and we've actually wanted to get you on for some time. So, But now we finally have you, so thank you for coming on. We're excited to talk to you. My yeah, pleasure. Thanks, man. Yeah, thank you for absolutely. having me. No worries. Um, so I guess I wanted to, to ask you a few questions first because the viewers or the listeners may not know you, although some of the people that listen to the podcast come here often, mm-hmm. so they might already know who you are, so they're like, why the fuck is this guy on? Okay, let's <laughs> cancel everything. <laughs> let's cancel everything. Show us the magic. Show yeah. us the magic. But uh, I, I think, uh, so what's like your background? Like, what are you doing currently in Taiwan? So, uh, mm-hmm. Well, right now I work for an American company. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, as a procurement manager, mm. which is a fancy title for basically just managing the factories in Asia. Ah, I see, I see. So how long have you been in Taiwan? Uh, almost four years now. Really? Yeah. Gotcha. So, and then... Um, so you procure things that are made in all around Asia for a yeah. certain company? Yeah. Okay, cool. Not, not so you're a, a buyer, buyer, basically. Yeah, so we don't want to drop, like, we don't really care. Uh, do you want to drop the name of the company or you don't? Well, it's called YSN Imports. Okay, so that they, they are not like a retail arm, but they then bring it all into America and sell on to retailers? Or uh, that, that too, and they also sell, uh, directly. sell directly on Amazon. Oh, cool. Oh, so wow. we could potentially give you like some sort of like segue kind of plug if you if you wanted. Yeah, if you, if you know what I mean. Like we can just chuck on like a, a link to your business or whatever if you want at the end of uh, this. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. All right. Why just like, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, fuck it, I don't care. But, yeah, just, no, it. that's not true. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> that's like, yeah true. just trying to get a... They pay you around it. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. obviously... They're friends too, actually. Yeah. 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 Really? Yeah, yeah. So have you been working for this company in Asia, obviously for four years in Taiwan? Were you working with them in Israel as well? No, no, no. Actually, oh. I've been working for them for only one year. Oh, really? Before that, uh, I did something else for an Israeli company and before that for a Taiwanese company. Ah, so, we, so we won't plug them. No, <laughs> we won't plug them. <laughs> no, no, no. Only the American company. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, been here for four years. Um, you like dogs, don't you? No. No, you hate dogs? I hate dogs. I just got one. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, you have a brand new puppy yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that you've been hanging out with. What's but your I puppy's adore. name? Uh, Arak. Arak. Or Arak, yeah. Now, I know the significance of the name, but no. what is Arak? What does that mean? Well, Arak is an aniseed drink. Really? Uh, yeah. I didn't know it was aniseed. Yeah, it, it oh, is cool. aniseed. Uh, from basically the Middle East. Hmm. So, Arak will be drunk. Is it only uh, drunken? 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 Drank? Only drank? And I get drunk by it, so I don't <laughs> <laughs> it'll make you drunken. Yeah, it'll make you drunken. Yeah. But uh, is it only drunken in Israel, or is it like no, all no, no, over no. the Middle no, East? No, no, it's, it's not an Israeli thing. It's oh, really? It's a Middle Eastern thing. Ah. <gasps> and it's the... <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> what? No, sorry. Not yet. Let's keep no. going. Basically, it's the Middle Eastern equivalent for uh, Uzo. That people uh, uh, know better. Mm. That's a uh, Greek. Yeah, I know. Uh, Uzo. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. It's very similar. He made me one on our, our river excursion where we played putt putt, uh-huh. and it was. It tasted a lot like almost like a Jägermeister or uh, similar, not quite. 
it was different. You are banned from the pub. It was lighter. <laughs> it was lighter than that, but it like uh, it had like a licorice taste yeah. to it. I can yeah. if if he's saying that's a bit like ouzo, then yeah, I can agree with both of you. Yeah, like yeah, well, it's, it's not heavy. You're, like you're like sort of right, and you're sort of wrong. Like Jaeger is like a. It's really like it's like syrup. Yeah. And this wasn't syrupy at all. No. It was very, very light. Yeah. So it's like a summer drink. You can drink it. But it had like a like a licorice taste to it. So, ah, so now I understand. So I was thinking like your um, your Hebrew or something must be coming on. Or what is Ararak? What is that? Is Arak? It? Yeah, Arak. Arak is actually in uh, Arabic. Word. Arabic. I was thinking yeah, Arabic yeah. must be coming on well there, Chad, because you introduced it as an, I know Ararak. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, yeah, really? I have no idea what the I've fuck I've been studying is. for yeah. a few years now. And now I see it. It's the mini putt. It's the mini putt. Ah. Yep, yep, yep. We just went to miniature golf and he made me one. Because I was like, what is that? It was like a cloudy substance. Yeah. So how, how was the mini putt? Because I, I didn't go. It was good. It was nice. It was fun. Yeah. It was you guys got a good crew there, right? I yeah. saw a few photos. Yeah, it was... How many people came? Maybe 20 or 25 people? Nice. Yeah, yeah it was quite a few. And you got a little, you had a little barbecue cooking down at the river? Yeah, barbecue and beer and putt-putt. That's pretty much what it was. And Sweet. dogs. And <laughs> there, there are a few kids there. So, but and and girlfriends. Oh, no. We, yeah, we, yeah, girlfriends. Did wives. Come. Some, uh, that some was, girlfriends, some That wives, was covered. Some mistresses. What did you say before? So It was dog? <laughs> no. Dog. Oh, come on. Uh, uh, yeah, we, we <laughs> getting getting all dark here. Yeah, so I didn't bring my wife, so left her at home. She wouldn't left her in the home. kitchen making yeah. cookies because she had a baby. Where she belongs. I think that's what we found out. <laughs> Where she so belongs. This woman has a baby. She has to make oh cookies. Oh my! Oh my! Yeah. Oh my! I'm, I like my my woman barefoot cooking. That's how I like my women. Well, I like to be barefoot, Chad. But uh, yeah, I'm not so sure about the cooking. Your your jawline's too masculine. Oh, thanks, mate. I'll take, I'll, take, I'll, I'll take that, actually. I'll, I'll take that. That's very good for both of us. Yes. Um, so, Iraq, what else is like a, a Middle Eastern tradition in that either drink or yeah. food? Yeah, well, what, what's like a, what's a good, what would you say is a good Middle Eastern plural, like non-Jewish, non Islamic or Muslim thing, like something like that. Are there are there many the kind things of like that? that that's area. Just well, when it comes really to cultural? food, yeah. to food and drinks, uh, basically almost all of it. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Like it's not it's uh, borderless. It's basically. yeah. It's not uh, limited to a certain region. Yeah. Right. You know? So okay. food and drink is the good shit, and yeah. then mm. from there it gets difficult. It's dicey. Mm. Mm. Right. So I guess we're gonna we're gonna shift gears a little bit maybe talk a little bit about Israel. Cool with that? Let's go for it, yeah. Sweet. So, um, I think one of the things that, as an American, Americans are predominantly pro-Israel. So, just because they want to back Israel and they they see it as the only legitimate democracy in the Middle East. And how, do, how would you as an Israeli person feel about Americans being pro-Israeli? Obviously, it's it's probably a good thing knowing that you have a, a large country that likes your country. Yeah, absolutely. So. No, I, I think uh, it's important to differentiate between, uh, pe- like, in any, like with any country, mm-hmm. between people that uh, never left their country or hometown or whatever, mm-hmm. and people that actually went and traveled a bit and saw different things. And mm. Because uh, I would guess that for most Israelis mm-hmm. that uh, never, well, never left, of course uh, they left, but uh, that are basically born and raised in Israel and uh, live uh, in Israel, mm-hmm. for most of them it's just great to mm-hmm. see, to meet like people from other countries that support their country. Right. Uh, for me personally, I lived uh, like a big part of my life outside of Israel. Mm-hmm. And uh, for me, I, I'm I'm always be I, I always a bit suspicious, like uh, with people that where are you from? Israel. Oh, yeah, that's amazing. You're awesome, and this and that. Right. That's like a big red flag. Right, <laughs> right, right. You're probably you know either super right wing, which there's nothing wrong with that, but uh, it's just like we're probably gonna have some differing viewpoints, right? Yeah. Right. Well, it's more about people who don't really know what's going on right but they're you know they're willing to support you no matter what and mm-hmm. that's something i have a fundamental problem with right. can, I, can i always say there i'm <coughs> kind of surprised about that I, I actually thought you would maybe find more people who were where you come from oh israel or i'm israeli and they'd be like oh 
Well, that's definitely that's, the case. Yeah. That, okay. That, it that is the is case. No, you just asked yeah. specifically about a yeah. certain type no, of Americans. True. Right. Okay, true. Right. So, <clears throat> because what I wanted to drill a little bit into is I'm quite aware of like uh, there's a lot of evangelical Americans that uh. will travel to Israel yeah. because they want to do like the pilgrim of Jesus and mm. all that stuff. Mm. And then while they're there, they're religious just, like, tourism. Like, oh, Israel is like the land of, of Christ and like. It's like the Holy Land and all of these things, and like I'm sure whenever you're in, in whenever you're in Israel and you run into Americans like that who may have only traveled to Israel, mm-hmm. so like they've only been in America and then Israel, and that's where that's all yeah. they've been. Like there are a lot of Americans that do that that are evangelical Christians, yeah. and that's like kind of what they just wanted to do. They, that's the only place they wanted to go, and then. Back, back to the south or back to wherever they came from. There are a lot of those in Israel. Yeah. Yes. That's quite yes. an interesting dynamic here because between you two because like coming from New Zealand, we obviously don't really have that Christian fundamentalist background, if you right. will. Like most people are actually agnostic slash atheist or non-denominational, whatever. Mm-hmm. If they are a religion or a Christian religion, it's probably Catholic or Anglican, mm-hmm. which are pretty kind of... They're not uh, fundamentalist religions, or you know, they're not that, right. that kind of conservatism. Right. So we actually have quite a, I'd have to say, like publicly or like just culturally, probably quite a negative view of Israel mm-hmm. and, and what it sort of has <coughs> done, or what has been done to it, or how it was formed, etc. Mm-hmm. If you know what I mean, we don't really have that pro-Israel block. Right. It's certainly a very very small block in right. New Zealand. So that's why I was surprised when you were sort of introducing that as, you know, I didn't think of the American angle where you would have more, a lot more allies. It's a right. very certain American angle. Yeah. There are, uh, like, other... Yeah, angles, well, of course. If, like, for instance, if you look at, while well, Obama was in his, his term, his eight-year term, like, the relationship between Israel and the United States kind of deteriorated and it mm-hmm. wasn't as strong yeah. as it was whenever you had conservative Christian presidents yeah. in power because they were far more pro-Israel and back to Israel and probably gave money, weapons, things like that to Israel. Mm. Because if you think about it, Israel is kind of this island in basically a sea of Islam. So, and it seems like everyone that surrounds Israel just wants death to Israel, it seems like. Yeah, it's kind of so, a, it's an existential threat there. Yeah, exactly. So, but... Can we just switch back a little bit though? Can sure. we go back a little bit earlier than that? So, like, say, like you, you said you're born and raised Israeli, mm-hmm. uh, but you also mentioned that you spent a bit of time or a fair bit of time My, uh, away from yeah. Israel. So, can you tell us where you came from in Israel and then where you went? Well, uh, that's uh, my favorite question because in Israel it's very easy. Like everything is pretty much close to Tel Aviv. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Or Jerusalem yeah. depends. Yeah, yeah. It, it really yeah. depends on your reference point. Right. But even those two are pretty close. So I everything know, is. Uh, I know there's a few regions. It's about eight regions, right? Like you have the, the is it the Negev or the yeah, desert? Negev, like the yeah. south part, yeah. and then you have the Haifa or Haifa. Haifa in yeah. the north is that right? And yeah. then you have Tel Aviv on the coast and Jerusalem in the center, middle. Yeah, uh, Tel Aviv and Jerusalem are more or less on the same. Uh, Almost like a cross. Oh my God! I actually didn't sit. I actually didn't sit. You forgot the other. You yeah. forgot the other six points. Yeah, there'd be, there'd be a couple uh, more points. Again, the beat. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> there we go. It's hilarious. But so, um, so you you're a Tel Aviv guy. Uh, you can say that. You can rough, say that. I'm not roughly. a city guy, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, but uh, yeah. uh, which uh, in Israel, by the way, is a uh, compliment. Oh, all right, okay. Because Israel start was founded by the kibbutzes mm. uh, movement. Mm. So, like uh, in Israel, saying he's a kibbutznik, which means like he comes from a kibbutz, okay. it's like yeah. a big compliment. What and a, what a city I, boy, it's like oh yeah, he's like a bit spoiled. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> one of my one of my brothers actually worked on a kibbutz. Yeah. Like about probably like 20 years ago now. I don't exactly know where. Yeah, I, never, I, never really like asked him. Yeah, I never really asked him exactly why or where, but I know that he spent some time there. Mm-hmm. He also went to Egypt as well, so I'm not sure how that worked. Maybe because like, isn't there issues sometimes with... Uh, uh, 20 years ago there was, Israel? but uh, then again... Uh, Maybe he went to Egypt first. Would that work? Would uh, that be uh, easier? He could have done any... Oh, okay. Any Just like that sometimes with Israel, if you travel through or you are in Israel, sometimes you have issues, do you not, with the... No, no, no. Like, if you, if you go to Israel, like, I have a good friend, that, uh, an American friend that recently went to Israel, mm-hmm. and she went through 
all of the Middle East. Like mm-hmm. she went to all the, basically everywhere, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. Uh, through her job. Mm-hmm. And uh, no, like they just uh, gave her a hard time, right. naturally, Asked like uh, at yes. the airport. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was fine. I was that thinking was more fine. of the reversal, though. I was thinking Israelis would probably be like fairly nonchalant, or you know, like they would do the security checks, but not really give a shit. Whereas if you went the other way, had you spent time in Israel first? No, no, but it, yes, you're absolutely right. But nowadays they don't stamp. Like if oh, you go to Israel yeah. first, they don't stamp your passport. Right. They stamp like they give you a paper. They stamp your hand. <laughs> whoa! 500, whoa! Five dollar, like, oh, oh, actually, yeah. Like, no, take, the, take that one back. Yeah. Sorry, shit. It's like um, the wall. They stamp your. No, we um, don't stamp hands in Israel. <laughs> stamp your shoulder. Or something. Oh, yeah. It's like a nightclub or uh, something much darker. Yeah. So you were born, and how long were you in Israel until you actually left? Uh, no, I. Uh, it was on and off. Like I grew up in Israel, and then. After the army, I went to work in uh, on cruise ships in the Mediterranean. Oh, really? okay. I worked in Mexico for a while. Nice. Traveled in China. It's the reason why you know what a Mark's new beer is. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> So how long were you in Mexico? <laughs> Only six months, actually. Yeah. It was okay. a pretty short time. Uh, yeah, what cities did you visit while you were there? I didn't visit uh, any cities. I was no, just uh, I, no, I was stuck in a, in a shithole in the middle of the <laughs> desert, <laughs> two hours drive from the American border. So what were you doing? So you were like by uh, like Laredo? Was you close to that? Like, uh, like no, 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 no. It was. Uh, do you know? Uh, or were you in the Baja Peninsula? No, no, no. It Not was just. It was really the middle of nowhere. <laughs> there was nothing there. Like. Uh, so why were you there? Because there, like I was working, it was right after the army, right? Ah. So I was working as, uh, like in security, like uh, as mm-hmm. a, a bodyguard, you can call it. Oh, okay. And there was this uh, super rich Mexican guy mm-hmm. that went to Israel, mm-hmm. uh, liked to play with uh, guns, mm-hmm. and they adored everything that has to do with, uh, you know, the Israeli army and stuff, and he wanted the, uh, like, Israeli bodyguards. Security detail. Security guys. I'm assuming. And he was willing to pay a lot of money, and nothing happened there, right? Like, it right. was uh, completely... You were in the middle of fucking nowhere. Yeah. Well, there was a lot of... Uh, cartel, it wasn't the cartel. narco-trafico, so yeah. there was a lot of... Uh, so there was reasons for it. Th- there was tension, yeah. but mm. nothing... Ever but happened when I was there. But After I guy. left, uh, it, uh, it's a different story. But right. Is that, is that guy still alive? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, that's good. All right, well. Well, definitely, like, like uh, I have some, some friends that, when I was working in Texas, uh, this guy was actually involved in one of the cartels in Mexico. He was a, he was a Mexican guy that worked in, in Texas, but he ended up coming to Texas to get away from the cartels, basically. Oh. And, like, had to have his, like identity changed and like went into asylum in the United States because uh-huh. or like pleaded for asylum in the United States because the cartel was after him. Jeez. So oh, he had like a Texas think, doesn't really sound like the best place. Yeah, it seems like they can that. still get you there. <laughs> but maybe. maybe it's one of those things like the closer you are to the fire, the actually the safer you you might be. Yeah. So yeah. I guess I don't know. But uh, yeah anyways, really interesting guy, but he still had connections to the cartel, even whenever he was out of the cartel, so he was like keeping mm-hmm. in contact. And I was telling him, like, man, that's probably not a smart idea. Like, <laughs> you shouldn't, even though like those are your cartel buddies, like another cartel that wants you dead, they might be able to still find out where the fuck you are. Yeah. Like, you should just, you're done with that side of your life. Oh, well, you know, it gives so. you, a, it gives you a lot of power. To be yeah. connected to the right people, and sometimes it's just hard to yeah. kind of decide. Okay, I'm starting everything fresh. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, well, which I think that's one of the things that he, he had trouble with because he went from being relatively wealthy in Mexico, mm-hmm. and then he came to the United States under like asylum and like went to driving a truck and like was making like minimum wage and stuff like that. Yeah. So I think he was like, I had like all these trucks and cars and guns and. I had a mistress and like all this stuff, and then it went from that. Only one. Yeah. Only, only one, one mistress. Yeah. yeah. Only he one. He was really low class. Yeah, huh? I know. He's a low class guy. <laughs> and then like from that, just nothing. Now I drive a truck and I have a Toyota Camry and I have a wife. Yeah, it's tough. I was like, well, oh, yeah, I, I could see how that would be pretty difficult to transition from that lifestyle to the mm-hmm. other lifestyle, but you're still alive, man. So you've got yeah. that. So. Yeah. yeah. So. 
I guess it, it depends how hard and fast you want to live your life. So, yeah. Well, so, let's go back to the military thing then. So, like, um, with, uh, with Israel, uh, what's, how long do you serve in the military? Uh, mandatory service uh, time for men is uh, three years. Right. Mm-hmm. And do you do that after high school or do you do that yeah. after university? Uh, usually it's uh, like 95% of the school. cases it's after high school. Okay, so they get you in kind of early yeah. and then like get it done by 21 sort of thing and then mm. you kind of can move on with your life? Kind of, yeah. Oh, well, I guess you're once also a, Once reservist. a year you have to yeah. go to reserve uh, yeah. training. Or so service. are you still uh, enlisted in the military? Do you have to go home? No, 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 not anymore. Like so, when is the cutoff for that? Is it after your third? No, well, it really depends. Uh, I mean, first of all, I served for four years, mm-hmm. and uh, and it really depends because, like, for example, like with me, I moved out of Israel, mm-hmm. and uh, I kind of uh, told them, like, guys, like, I'm sorry, I won't come back once a year right. for you know two weeks of doing whatever. Right. Of course, if there's something big going on, like if there's a big war or something, I, I probably go back. But right. Mm. But if you're and not needed, it's kind of like all right. Yeah. I see. And the female side of things, because there's women conscription. Uh, for women, it's uh, two years, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And so but most of them, like a lot of them, uh, some of them don't have to. Okay. Mm. Uh, so, but. Essentially, if you're a female, you're up for two years as well. Mm. Yeah, uh, with a few exceptions. Yeah, yeah. So probably if you're pregnant or something like that. You're pregnant, married. Uh, sometimes they just skip like uh, certain drafts. You know? Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, shout out equality, eh? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yep. They've got equality in uh, Israel. I think. I don't. I don't know. I know the United States has recently allowed women in, into the military. We've actually had a podcast yeah, about this. Sort of so about this, but where yeah. the, uh, it used to not be allowed. Um, how is Israel as far as like elite soldier training? Do they have like special operations female units. Is that available for women? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Like there are uh, women pilots, <coughs> right? That's for sure. Mm-hmm. And you can definitely call that like elite. Uh, right. Yeah. Of course. The most elite it can get. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, most of the women in the army, like. Unlike what most people think, mm-hmm. they don't, uh, you know, run up the hills with guns and, uh, right. uh, you know, army is a big bureaucratic yeah. of thing, course, like of course. Uh, body institute, right. and uh, you, it, so, so a, 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 a lot of uh, men, by the way, do uh, like secretary work, right, yeah. right, like paperwork and stuff. It's not all about uh, fighting guns. Yeah, of course, a lot of intelligence and a lot of supplies, yeah. etc. Yeah. Right, a lot yeah. of like logistics, R and D. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, I have. Well, my cousin was in the Marine Corps for like five or six years, and he was in Motor K, K, I believe. So okay. he, he did a tour of Iraq, and I think he also no, he didn't go to Afghanistan. He did like 16, 16 months in Iraq, I believe. Uh-huh. So and then my brother-in-law, who he's actually got a lot longer record. He was he was in the paratrooper like hundred and. 82nd Airborne for the Army, which mm-hmm. is like a, it's like a reserve unit for the Rangers, I guess, the Army okay. Rangers. But he did two tours of Afghanistan and then two to- or one tour of Iraq. Then he oh. was also a mercenary, kind of like as you were in Mexico, but he did that in Iraq. Well, I wouldn't call it a mercenary. Like you were a kind job. of a mercenary, though, right? Uh, no, I, I didn't. I did, yeah, but I didn't even uh, have guns. <laughs> oh, really? You didn't? No, have no, no. It was shit. like uh, just for me? show. It was more of a really theater show, you know. Oh fuck! I thought, <laughs> I thought you were like rocking around Holy with shit. like yeah, no, 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 no. rifles. Oh, oh, I mean, no, no, he had like his Mexican bodyguards that had guns. They I, had guns. I, I wasn't allowed to carry a gun like in a <laughs> foreign country. Oh my god! So oh. like, yeah, he really just had a fetish for like Israeli. No, no, shit. absolutely. Oh wow! He just wanted you to like stand around and like stare at you. Look tough. Like Look, he just, like he that, just in Mexico, that's kind of the exotic thing. thing. Yeah, like he uh, could, uh, the most exotic thing he could have. I see. So, so this ex, guy was uh, ex-military Israeli special forces. Yeah, yeah. Whatever he wanted to. Uh, so like the, the, the cliche movie kind yeah, of thing absolute, for this guy absolutely. to actually live, if you know what I mean. It's like, yeah, I want to, yeah. I want a detail of that. No, no, wow. absolutely. Yeah. So this guy must have actually been a fucking baller, right? Like he must have been like just. A lot of money. Uh, well, eight hundred million uh, dollars. 
Yeah, I think it counts for a lot yeah, of money. Yeah, I think that counts. <laughs> yeah, I put them in the bowler club. Yeah, yeah. I would say that's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's pretty wild, though, man. Probably actually does have a baseball club. Probably. Yeah. He probably <laughs> owns a football team or something in Mexico. Uh, he owns the uh, Mexico Monclova Acereros. Really? Baseball team. Yeah. I know who that it's is. It's a fucking ball. There were like when I was there, they were like second in the Mexican league. Yeah, I know, I know who that is. It's pretty famous. So. That's a completely random segue here. Does MLB, like Major League Baseball, ever play Mexican baseball? Uh, just no, they they won't play that. They're too okay. They're too even just as like preseason or friendlies or anything like no. that. Yeah, sure, man. Um, no, they won't, they won't. They won't. They won't play uh, those teams. But you know what? They might do a crossover game with minor league, which is still professional level. Okay, so it's like Mexican league level uh, baseball is probably it's good, triple but not A that or good. like the standard okay. is just not high enough. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So they won't they won't play a major league team, but they will play like a triple A or a double A team. All right, cool. So All right, well we're yo-yoing around here a little bit, but like let's uh, get back to yeah. Um, sorry, we can get back to all right. So Israel. In and out, in and out for your childhood sort of thing, and then you did some military time, and then you mm-hmm. came back, and you went to university. Yeah. And you did that in Israel too. Yeah, or in Jerusalem. Yeah, that's right. I thought so. I thought you mentioned the Hebrew that. University of Jerusalem. Oh, there you go. Oh, <laughs> it, does, it. it doesn't get more <laughs> yeah, than just just than that. <laughs> slam that shit down. All right. That was the first university like in Israel. So yeah. That's why. So were you raised religious whenever you were a child? Absolutely not. No? So you, you're like a secular Jew. Is that right? Oh uh, Yeah, you can call it that, I guess. I mean... Uh, Do you well, call yourself a Jew? Or no, no, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There, there's one thing that I had a bit of a problem explaining to like friends of mine here. Mm-hmm. that. Uh, so hopefully now you only have to do it once. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> Guys, hear me out. <laughs> Just gonna listen. Say, listen. listen to the podcast. Yeah. Uh, being Jewish, like, it's not only a religion. Mm, right. Like, it's totally, like, uh, also... Cultural. Uh, cultural, uh, maybe today calling it, uh, and right. by the way, a lot of Israelis would uh, stand up on their hind legs and like, yeah. what the hell? This is uh, your... Uh, like, maybe today it's a bit more problematic calling it, uh, like, ethnical mm-hmm. background. Mm-hmm. Uh, although there are like scientists that uh, actually research that part and right. trying to prove uh, the other way around, but the thing is, it's a very strong identity that, in my mind, has nothing to do with religion. Of course, that religion is part of it, can be part of it, but it's uh, not only uh, about religion. Right. Would you say kind of things that would define you as being Jewish would maybe be? An understanding of Hebrew, or like sort no. of having a, a no. So no, no, absolutely no? not. I mean, <coughs> so what you would, you, what would you, place can, you, you can you can argue that because uh, Jewish people uh, like pray in Hebrew. Yeah, but uh, they don't need to understand what they're reading. Right? Yeah. Mm. Uh, so and, and there are a lot of Jewish people I met that uh, don't speak uh, Hebrew. Well, yeah, and I guess you can you can claim Jews? there are a lot more Jews than me. And like a lot of American Jews probably wouldn't speak Hebrew or not so American well. American right? Jews, Argentinian oh, Jews, Russian uh, French Jews, Jews, Jews yeah, Russian Jews for sure. Yeah, Russian Jews. Yeah. Okay, so the, the the Hebrew side of like the Jewish culture, maybe that's actually more localized to Israel. You think? Or well, no? it depends. Like uh, as I said, like all Jewish people have to pray in Hebrew. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like make the Hebrew sound right. Yeah. They they can read in whatever language they want, but the the, the it should sound a bit like Hebrew. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Hebrew is a very fundamental part of being Jewish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. But uh, actually being able like speaking it on like daily life, mm-hmm. like that's I would say more Israeli. Yeah. And uh, but also like a lot of uh, Jewish people in the diaspora. Yeah. Like learn Hebrew because of that. Yeah. So okay. So um, w- is there like two major sort of branches of of being uh, Jewish? Is there the like, or <coughs> maybe more than two? But is there two? I might not say the names very well. Is it like Shep Shephardi Shephardi? Sephardi and Ashkenazi. Oh, uh, Ashkenazi. Sephardi and Ashkenazi. And Ash- yeah, that's yeah. yeah. So are they the two major? Yeah. Parts. Yeah. And what is the? Is it just geographically different? Or mainly. Well, mainly. Yeah. So that Ashkenazi uh, from the east. It's not Ashkenazi. 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 Yeah, yeah. No, it's a joke in Israel. Yeah, yeah. 
well, like people, you know, like yeah. Ashkenazi people like that me. are like very strict, like you're yeah. such an Ashkenazi. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, my, my level of understanding of Israel is about 1%. And my level of understanding of Hebrew is about zero <laughs> percent. So just yeah, you're gonna definitely need to coach me through. I'll but you know what I'm doing there. Yeah. So what, so what that is that Eastern European side versus the yeah. Western basically the European, European side, side versus the Jews that came from the Muslim countries. Oh, okay, right, okay. And by the way, Sfaladi, Sfalad <coughs> means uh, Spain in Hebrew. Ah, oh, right, yeah, yeah. But uh, that that's because when. Uh, that was one of the major, the main uh, like hubs and uh, centers for Judaism uh, during the Islamic uh, Empire yeah. era. Mm. It was in Spain. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I see. So, I, I kind of want to switch gears and talk a little bit about Gaza. Are you are you cool with that? Sure. So, what is? Uh, oh, was there a beautiful place? <laughs> <laughs> so, like most Israeli people. Uh, are quite, well not quite, are like anti-Gaza pretty much, right? What does it mean? Well, like uh, like the Gaza Strip is essentially like a, it's just a, is it a rogue state of Israel? Is that what it's considered? Or is it, it's a, it's an I, or I'm sorry, Irish, Islamic state of Israel? Is that what they're claiming? So I'm, I actually don't know anything Okay, so about. look, right now, we can go into history, but uh, let's talk about what's going on right now. Right. Right now, in the mm -hmm. Gaza Strip, mm -hmm. there's the Hamas mm -hmm. government there. Mm -hmm. And the Hamas, by definition, refuses to acknowledge Israel. Right. So, calling it uh, whatever strip of Israel, that's just, uh, that's not going to work for any side. Right, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Now, uh, so with one, the... One part of Palestine, would that be a better way of saying it? Mm -hmm. Again, it depends like which side of the map you you're talking yeah. to. Mm, but okay. <laughs> yeah. mm. but uh, no, the, the thing is that you asked, like, your original question was, are you anti-Gaza? Anti mm. And uh, it's not a very clear question mm. because what, like, I'm pro-Gaza. Mm. Like, I want Gaza to prosper and everything. I don't know what it means, you know? Right. Like, the bottom line is right now there's a government there that refuses to acknowledge uh, Israel mm -hmm. as a state or as any anything basically right. and they chose their way of uh, expressing ex expressing themselves yeah mm -hmm. and as uh, in terrorism basically right right so to juxtapose that against the West Bank is that still controlled by Fatah is it Fatah Fatah and and that's a more sort of like say political Islam as opposed to a jihadist Islam would that uh, be right? Yes, I guess. Uh, well, no, that's not a very... Because there are jihadists that uh, came from, from, from the West Bank too. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a, as a rule, they, they in the West Bank, like Ashraf, uh, or let's call like Abu Mazen, their leader, is uh, kind of like say, he says that he's against terrorism and we need to try to work things out. But on the other hand, he kind of support facilitates it. Yeah, kind of needs it. There's for a lot of terrorism coming from, like the, West from the West Bank too. too. Would you say that one is more virulent than the other? Because I mean, that they're, they're two separated entities, right? Yes, but uh, I, I would say that the main difference is that uh, one can uh, like act, one uh, actually acknowledges yeah. the fact that Israel might be. Uh, partner is a big word right now in yeah. that region, mm -hmm. uh, but might be a side yeah. to talk or to fight or to whatever. But, uh, while the other one, the other side, like uh, Hamas in, Ga in the Gaza Strip, just refuses to acknowledge yeah. anything that, that has basically anything to do with Israel. Okay, so um, just looking at, at like uh, when people talk about the two-state solution, mm -hmm. which is obviously like say an Israel and a Palestine. Mm -hmm. How, how could you see, say, something where there is two parts that are geographically separated, i.e., you know, Gaza and, say, the West Bank, if you were to, say, to work out all the differences, how could you then still have a, a two-state, like a Palestine, potentially, that was, say, the West Bank and Gaza, when they're geographically separated? Like, could you ever see that happening? Uh, like, that's how, how problematic, could that, how could for that sure. Yeah. 
uh, the thing is, right now, the I mean, the bottom line is you talk to leaders, you talk to governments, right? Mm -hmm. And right now, there are two different governments. And like one is in the West Bank and the yeah. other is in the Gaza Strip. Yeah. And they hate each other guts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So you talk to whoever is going to listen to you. Mm -hmm. Or wh who's ever going to talk to you back, you so know? Right. Can, I, can I ask naively, because so I really don't know, I've never heard about this and I just, I just don't know enough. But mm -hmm. um, So is there any talk of a three-state solution? No, not yet. Look, it's... I, there, there are, there's so many details I don't know where to start from yeah, but okay. uh, the bottom line is don't worry we the like, Palestinian we like you. We'll, you can come back <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll give you a month we'll give you a month off uh, <laughs> do the, some homework I'll, I'll do some homework too <laughs> <laughs> sure uh, the Palestinian identity uh, wasn't there the national Palestinian identity wasn't yeah. there up until let's say 60 years ago roughly yeah. maybe even less than that mm. before that it was about like a group of <coughs> villages uh, of mainly immigrants by the way mm. from different parts of the Middle East yeah now so uh, one argument in Israel is there is no Palestinian uh, people yeah I know I know hear me out that's like a hardcore right-wing mm. like agenda there is no Palestinian people why should we even consider them as people in that aspect yeah. and we need to find a different solution not unite them but you know something else that's like one aspect of the you know the political uh, uh, spectrum yeah. uh, which obviously I am very much against yeah but uh, well, it's just completely it's gonna cause conflict yeah it does completely well yeah because the fact is you need to face reality and reality right now is there is a Palestinian people Exactly. Like there is a Palestinian nation. They see themselves as there's some uh, kind of collective identity there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now they have like uh, they're separated between like in different uh, let's call it ideologies. Uh, with uh, right now it's Hamas and uh, Fatah. Okay. So the Israeli side. Let's say, in my perspective, let's not talk about Israel. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. In my perspective, I would talk to whoever is going to talk to me back, whoever I can create a dialogue. Right. So you would obviously say then, I mean, you know, don't want to put words in your mouth, but like you would obviously say that there's, there's obviously more hope for the we for a West Bank solution than a Gaza solution at current, currently. Just uh, but the fact that like one can actually kind of see you and at least can think that there's room to, to maneuver to politic to barter and the others like ridden into what it is yes it but cannot deal with you that's true but uh, in my opinion the bottom line is uh let's say you get uh israel get uh into like the negotiations with uh, ashraf uh, Fatah in the west bank right yeah. And there's a peace treaty, and all of a sudden, like life quality in the West Bank goes like pew, through mm. the roof because right now it's pretty yeah. shitty down there, like mm. over there. Like the bottom line is, the people in Gaza that are being uh, kind of, uh, I would say, maneuvered or like the, there's a kind of a dictatorship there. Mm. Like if you don't have the right opinion about what Israel is and what the Palestinian people are mm -hmm. is like you get uh, in trouble in trouble is yeah. uh, very nice yeah <laughs> you, you disappear yeah. 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 <laughs> okay yeah. mm -hmm. so my uh, like my in my opinion that when the people in Gaza see like how their brothers just on the other side of the border like uh, how they live and what they could get if they would only be willing to change their mindset a bit. Mm. So I think that's the key. Yeah. Now, the pro <laughs> there's a, like uh, a lot of layers to this yeah, yeah. Uh, issue, right. right? So the under layer to that is, okay, uh, like what do you do with the West Bank? Because right now there is no partner. By the way, on other side, uh, on like on the both sides, like the Israeli side and the Palestinian side, uh, there are no partners for, mm -hmm. uh, real dialogue yeah which is like a big uh, issue in Israel like uh, yeah. criticism in Israel 
Mm. This could be a good point to move on to the way yeah. that you do politics because you, you've got the Kassinet, is that right? The Knesset? Yeah, that's your parliament, parliament yeah. right? So um, with that, you, you're actually a lot like New Zealand. I'm not sure if you know okay. that or not. Uh, well, we both have like a 120 member parliament. Really? It's unicameral. So the idea is that there's only one house. There's no upper house. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't have a president like you do, but we have a prime minister. And we have all, a prime minister too. Yeah, exactly. But we don't have, have a president. Like the president is more of a ceremonial nominal, uh, Yeah, okay, position. sure. So yeah, I mean, um, yeah, pr- prime minister has the power, right? I wish ours was. Which is yeah. like New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So basically we both have 120 seat parliaments uh-huh. and that proportional representation. Mm-hmm. So it basically means that no party ever wins 50% and, and rules as a, you know, as a strong party. Yeah. It's always coalitions. Or it has been like that since 1996 mm-hmm. in New Zealand. I think for you guys it's been since that from, the, from time since again, the right? 50s. Adam and Eve. Basically. Adam and Eve. Should, but no. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 for 5,000 years. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, yeah. So, like, and you used to have, like, only 1% was your threshold, right? So if you got 1% 2%. of, and now it's, can, yeah, it's, it's gotten higher, right? Yeah. But, yeah, so <coughs> that kind of, can you talk, tell us a little bit about that? Because I don't think a lot of countries have proportional representation, mm-hmm. like Israel or New Zealand, and, like, what do you, what do you think about that? Because, I mean, from memory, I might be wrong, I generally am, but I'm using, I'm using, <laughs> you're, you're I'm using close. close. <laughs> yeah, I'm using close. I think there's ten parties in the Israeli Knesset or whatever. Knesset. Yeah, Knesset. Yeah. Love how Knesset. 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 Yeah. Knesset. 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 So yeah. there's ten parties, I think, at the moment. So obviously. Honestly, I'm not sure. I think there there are more. But Maybe uh, Chad, you can get on that. While we can look at that. Chad. Yeah. But I mean, you know, like most sort of democracies, whatever Western democracies, um, or where people come from. They're generally pretty comfortable thinking of like two parties, three parties. You know, maybe there's a fourth small boy party or a mm-hmm. green party or something into yeah. politics. But most countries aren't familiar with sort of actual proportional representation and the fact that you can have six, seven, eight, ten parties in parliament. You know, so do you want to talk about that? Like, do you think what's the pros and the cons for Israel and and this whole you know, where it is? Because you obviously can't have a strong party or a strong line. About anything, really. You're right. There are ten in power. I'm sorry. To yeah. There are cool. ten. In ah, power. in in like, like the in coalition. The yeah. In the parliament. In there the are parliament ten. or coalition. In the, yeah, in the of parliament, course, parliament, there are uh, ten parties that are like yeah. in the parliament. So and mm-hmm. then there'll be like three or four or the, five, maybe that are the, the top right? is uh, the correct me Likud. Likud, yeah. And then that's the like uh, Bibi. Benjamin ah. Netanyahu's. Uh, so he's, oh, he's okay. running. He's he's your prime minister, right? Mm-hmm. And he has the major party, and then he'll have hangs on and such that yeah. are maybe making him be more hardline or more progressive. About right now, this whatever. is the most uh, right wing coalition mm-hmm. like uh, we ever had. Yeah, really. That's so I was going to ask you that. Like, what are the leanings of the political parties? The cut is. It's a, a right yeah. center right. Maybe is that where it is, or is it just more right than anything? Uh, no, no, no. It's not. It's center right. The but problem is that the whole center <laughs> of the right moved. wing just moved, like uh, you know, maybe a little further right than yeah. most people would like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it looks like the second group in power is the Kulanu. Right? Kulanu. Yeah. yeah. That's. Uh, so that's your. Is that your major left and right opposition? No, no. The uh, Kulanu is not. Uh, <coughs> left wing oriented uh, it's more of a like it's there like there there's a big uh, economic problem in Israel and they they are there to they kind of try to not present themselves as right or left it's more about the, the economic development and creating more so jobs maybe they're more of like a, a socialist party is that what they are well yeah but by socialist uh, like by default socialist it's is kind of left you, wing yeah, and, right. and actually the founder of that uh, party is uh, more right wing oriented I see I see and then the third party that I won't say anymore after this uh, is the Jewish home yeah so. you can only imagine <laughs> <laughs> it's not <laughs> kind of thinking, they're, they're definitely yeah. they're not, not winking yeah, towards the not really left too much to, to think about that yeah yeah, right. yeah. then the other surprisingly enough they started as uh, of course like of course they're a right wing party the, the, the Jewish Jewish, Jewish homemakers party <laughs> and then they did, the homemakers got left over and they said Jewish home yeah. <laughs> no but uh, it, there's actually they actually started with a very reasonable reasonable agenda mm-hmm. Uh, 
right-wing oriented, but very reasonable of, uh, look, we have nothing against uh, Palestinians or Arabs. We want to integrate them uh, in our society or give them more jobs or this or that. And the, like in the last few years, you can clearly see the, you know, the right, like the extreme right-wing orientation there. Of, uh, it's kind of taken over that part. Yeah. Can I um, I'll check a couple more stats in, if yeah. I think are roughly correct. Um, so, Israel is about 8 million people, right? Yeah. About, you know, something in that, in that ballpark, I think, 8 million. Um, and I think, from memory, it's 20% uh, ethnically Arab, would that be right? Yes. Yeah, and I think maybe something like 15 to 20% uh, Muslim as well. Mm-hmm. So, you would think with like such a low threshold to enter parliament, there'd be some quite sizable, uh, you know, like Muslim blocks inside of your parliament. Yeah. And so, like, what do they do? Where do they, like, where do they operate? Uh, they just operate. The, up at, like, before the last elections? A counter? Like, they just, they're just on the cross benches or the opposition? Or well, they're... Uh, right now, Well, it, it really depends. Like, uh, they usually on the opposition mm-hmm. by their own choice. Yeah, because mm-hmm. they can't agree to... The major parties. By the way, but by, by well, in the last eight years, it's been a very like uh, strong right wing uh, coalition. Mm. So of course, it would be yeah, the bottom lines are just ridiculous. Well, for them, yeah. But uh, no, before, honestly, I'm not sure. I don't know if they were like there were before the before the last elections. There were uh, like uh, if I'm not mistaken, three or four different uh, Arab parties. Mm. Maybe I can I can list them off. Because I'm looking at opposition. Sorry, whenever I was telling you the name of those three parties, those are the three uh, uh, government parties, and there's another opposition group that's in there. The opposition, the three top parties for them are the Zionist Union. Um, Not Arabs. Joint <laughs> List. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying those don't sound Arab at all. So, uh, Joint List. Yeah. And then Yesh Atid. Yeah. yeah, joint list was something I was interested in because I looked that up and I was like, so is, is that like independent people? Like that the win? joint list? Honestly, I'm not sure. Yeah, I need to look that up as well because sure. I was kind of fascinated because I, I couldn't really see anything. I could see that there were people or parties that were part of the joint list or something, but I was like, I don't know what a joint list is. Mm-hmm. So I thought it, you know, I don't know. So, so I'm going to try my hand. I just looked it up. Uh, I'm going to try and say Hebrew here. Okay. <laughs> you can luck, correct me. Yeah, yeah. Good luck. Uh, Hareshma Hameshutafet. Hareshma Meshutafet. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Uh, joint what list. Did you say? No, that's, yeah. that's the, the Hebrew name for it. But it's a political alliance of four Arab dominated parties. Yes, that's it. Uh, okay, so, so it is that, that, uh, So yeah. there were like four different uh, Arab parties before, mm-hmm. and they joined for, up. For years, they uh, tried to kind of unite to have more uh, yeah. say like yeah. in the parliament, and they, they always had their differences. And then the last elections, surprisingly enough, because like the whole coalition started moving more and more towards the right, uh, so they managed to get together and... Uh, yeah. Okay. And so by the way, by the way... So the joint list is sort of the answer to my question of where is the... Arabic slash Muslim voting bloc of Israel. Yeah. No, by the way, that's that's well something that. that's something that uh, surprises a lot of people for some reason. You don't vote down party lines, ethnic lines. No, no, that the, the fact because you know the, the trend nowadays is uh, to call Israel uh, an apartheid state, no. you know, and all of that. And uh, I didn't say that. No, no, you didn't. I just, no, I, no, just, no, I, just, I, just <laughs> I just mentioned stamping of wrist. No, other than that, <laughs> and I said something else. But other than just that. stamp in the wrist and turn on the office. But apart from <laughs> yeah. that, like yeah, it's nightclubs. Nightclubs. Right? <laughs> <That's what I'm laughs> anyway. No, but uh, that's something that people really don't get that. Uh, Yes, there are inequalities in Israel, mm. and there are a lot of things to work on on the social, like aspect of it. Mm-hmm. I'm talking right now. I'm, I'm not referring to uh, like West Bank and Gaza Strip. I'm talking about the Israeli Arabs, and uh, but the bottom line is it's it can't be further away uh, from apartheid. It's it has nothing to do with that. Right. Like uh, Arab people can vote do vote 
and they have their own uh, representatives in the Israeli election. Yeah, yeah. yeah they have their. Voice. They are Israelis. Yeah, yeah they are Israelis. Yeah. Right. And like uh, they have a voice. No, like, yeah, absolutely. Israel is actually very like multicultural. Yeah. Like, with yeah. The yeah. yeah. And by the way, to be completely frank here. Uh, some uh, like uh, villages or kibbutzes or uh, townships get more funding than others and mm -hmm. it's usually the Arab villages that are on the lower end of the of that equation mm -hmm. which is something that is not right and yeah. need to but uh, port, by the way it, it port also barrel, port barrel politics yeah but it but but it also comes from the fact that uh, you know there are different ideologies like ideas, let's call it, of how to spend your money. Mm. Like for example, in most, something that most people don't know, in most uh, Arab villages, there are no parks. Really? No parks. Huh. And it's not because they don't have the funding for it. Mm. It's because they, they view, uh, and again, like I, I'm saying they, right? I, I'm putting a lot yeah, of people in one box, which is not yeah. fair, but like. We understand what you're saying. <laughs> but the time is short, so let's move right. on. And uh, they uh, have a different perspective, like a different idea of what uh, land should use for. Yeah. Right. What right. You do with it, yeah. And uh, if you have land, mm -hmm. like, like the Israeli government tried to build like parks, and uh, you know gardens, whatever, in like uh, Arab villages, mm. and it, they just trashed it or start building, mm. like in the middle yeah. of a park. They just didn't. They yeah. don't see, yeah. yeah. see the value of the amenity. Yeah. They, it needs to be for something else. So, to wrap this uh, issue mm -hmm. like uh, up, they are like... Uh, that's why I have a very hard uh, time when people say Israel is an apartheid state. Because it's not true. It's just, it couldn't be further away from the truth. Right. I saw something else um, where it was, um, you know, we talked about it. Israel's roughly 8 million people, yeah. something like that. Um, this article I was reading was saying that there was only 8,000 homes in the uh, occupied territories. Would that be would that be right, or would that be too low? No, there are a lot more. Than yeah, that. I thought it must a lot be more than that. because I was thinking if you do the numbers there, that's not even like one percent, right? That's is that like point one percent? I don't know. Sure no, no, there are, there are a lot, like, a know, lot there more than that. Lot yeah, more than there, that right? There's yeah. at least was, like half a million. All oh, right, because I was reading this article and like, yeah, it was like I was thinking of the population and I was thinking of this article and I was thinking, how could how can the occupied territories and only sort of eight thousand homes be like such a breaking? No, I'm, I'm saying there's has, a, there's there are at least like a half a million people. That. Yeah, like uh, Jewish uh, settlers. Yeah, okay. in the West Bank. Yeah, I, I don't know about homes. No but houses, yeah, but, uh, whatever. But that's yeah. way too low. Basically. No, no, yeah, no. yeah. I, I thought it was way too low. So yeah, I won't keep. Going. Oh, I just thought if that was true, I was thinking, wow, like that's just such a small thing mm -hmm. to be to be such a, an issue. But it yeah. has to be bigger than that. Yeah. yeah. No, no. Like the, the the settlements are a big issue. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I issue. think there's the, like <clears throat> I am honestly I understand both sides. Mm -hmm. Like one side says says. Look, this is like, okay, like, we were promised the land uh, or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. And that side says, okay, well, this is my territory, this is my land. And uh, if uh, Palestinians want to live here, maybe they can, maybe they won't, it depends. Like, uh, and the bottom line, this is mine. And uh, I'll do everything I can to make it mine. And in history perspective, like I just need to keep going, mm -hmm. you know. Keep and uh, the eventually it will be mine. Yeah, that's put one some, perspective. Put some roots in, basically. Yeah, right. The other perspective is okay. Uh, so we got this book called the Bible, which is great, and <laughs> pretty, no, it's awesome. Pretty, no, no, no. It, it is important. It is important be honest, because actually, when weird you, plot line. when you think about it, <laughs> weird plot and line. that's the major right wing argument. When you think about it, the first real estate uh, deal in human history is in the Bible. And that's like when Abraham bought... That was written, right? Yeah, like that Abra when Abraham bought uh, land in Hebron, mm. which is now one of the biggest, uh, you know, uh, conflicts 
there are because uh, and that's some people say that this is actually the root of the Israeli Jewish argument for Israel hmm. this is uh, you know a business agreement a lot of Jewish people can relate to that hmm. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, it's written there, and that means this is ours. Like this is our argument. This is our basic we legitimacy. Have it is legitimacy it? to mm-hmm. to be here. This is the contract. Is there, yeah. a, is there a signature? And was it double signed? Absolutely. Oh, right. Okay. Well, now we're okay. talking. Right, yeah. They got a, They got their copy too. <laughs> <laughs> it's up there, right? Yeah. But, um, uh, la- I guess maybe last question. Yeah. Wrap it up soonish. I have to ask this one. Is it like I don't know, we can come back to it if it's too big a too big a deal? Mm-hmm. But it's a little bit of a throwaway. But the idea is like uh, post World War Two. Is this a is this a wives' tale or like a in fact of, like actually a bullshit you know yarn basically? But post World War Two was the op- was there an option of a Jewish homeland or a Jewish state or an Israeli homeland, Israeli state in Madagascar? You're gonna go there. You're yeah, gonna, I, go I there. Am gonna go there. <laughs> oh my so, god. What is that? Is that fact or fiction? Uh, is that was that actually legitimate? Uh, it wasn't Madagascar. It was Uganda. Okay. Well, there we go. And uh, that look, seems, that seems bad. The guy the that actually considered that at the time was the head of the Zionic uh, Congress. Okay. Why would he? His name was that? Herzl. Okay, and he was the one that got that was offered this deal. Listen, like, okay, there's a new movement here. Uh, how about you just move to Uganda and let's call it a day and he was a complete atheist right he was Jew Jewish by default like by birth and all but he was a complete atheist he didn't practice Judaism he didn't keep the Shabbat or whatever and he was like no he considered that for a while, it can, like it's an option, like it's it was on the table, and he said no, no way, okay. because the bottom line is, I strongly believe that, uh, and that's something a lot of people who are not Jewish uh, have no idea about, which is fair enough, but uh, Jewish people, every in every prayer, most prayers uh, ended the prayer for 2,000 years with next year in build Jerusalem so all I'm saying is there's a common like uh, identity there mm. that, like that, that, that specific holy land was craving important. for 2,000 years was craving for one specific place yeah and if you'd got another they place, identified themselves they identified themselves as people that actually came from that place mm-hmm. and you can add all the religious yeah, yeah. arguments on that that are very strong if you're religious I'm not mm-hmm. uh, but the bottom line is there's something very fundamental in the identity mm-hmm. that you just cannot take out like the land from right. that identity yeah the land is part of the people and the people are part of the land uh, yeah that's what it is. I just, I just feel like, well, as you've, as you've dispelled that the Madagascan thing was not true, um, or it's not actually a real thing, it was Uganda. Yeah. But I almost just feel like, as a sort of like a, as a laboratory experiment or as like a science experiment, if you had like a, the ability that, you know, to have that other history or that alternative history or whatever, um, I'd love to see how potentially a, a Madagascan Israel would have played out. Would have turned out. out. Uh, you know what? what I mean? Okay, like, like uh, you know, just in terms of like, I'm not saying that it need, like it's not going to happen. It didn't happen, but I'm just saying like it's a counter history or whatever. It's a right. counter narrative. How it would be amazing to see what you would have created off the side of Africa, say, over the last sixty, yeah, but, seventy but years, look, as opposed John, to where you I, are. I told you that before that uh, for a lot of Jewish people, not only Israelis, Jewish people in general, that's uh, actually a very offensive thing to say. Okay. Because, uh, like, for the sake of, uh, like, of argument, yeah, of course you can say whatever you want. But for Jewish people, it's a very offensive thing to say because, again, a lot of the Jewish identity comes from that place called Israel. Yeah. That's what makes us, Jewish people, uh, Jewish. 
like a people, basically. That's part of it. It's not all of it, of course, but it's a major part of it. And you, like, when you take that out of the equation, it's like, okay, so you, you don't understand the basic, the most basic thing of what it means to be Jewish. No, I don't. Or Israeli, for that matter. Yeah, I don't. And that's fine, because you're not, and yeah. that, that's totally fine. But all I'm saying is, it's very important to understand that there's something here that hasn't happened through all of human history. Mm. Like a people, like people that left their home, not by choice, kept their uh, culture, let's say a part of their culture because they had like different cultures built on top of that, depending yeah. on the right. place that they went to, but they kept their culture, they kept a certain language, yeah. like kind of uh, half alive, yeah. mm -hmm. and went back 2,000 years later with and revived the language, revived a uh, certain culture, repatriated it. And that you don't have a single, even remotely close example to that in human history. So all I'm saying is, it just shows that you have a very strong uh, idea of, a, of an identity there. And when you take Israel, the, the place, out of that equation, I think uh, you just, it will just cause uh, like a lot of miscalculations and it would make the whole idea completely irrelevant. Yeah, that's I what I think. That. I like it. Cool. It's good. Thank you for bringing it home for us. Yeah, man. <laughs> Brought it home. It's awesome. good. Thank you very much, Your Kev. Thank you guys so, for having me. Yeah. yeah, we'll have to have you on again if you'd like. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so, hopefully we can not talk about Israel and just shoot the shit. Right? So, <laughs> get really drunk. Maybe 50-50. Yeah, maybe next one 50-50. <laughs> maybe, maybe next one 50 -50. I, yeah. still, I still like, I still got a few questions. But yeah, it's good. <laughs> nice. I liked it. It was good. Yeah. Fleshed out some stuff. Thank you very much. Uh, before we go, though, we'd like to thank Mark at Beer Geek. Um, hope you guys can check him out in Taipei, because we'll certainly be here and we'll be drinking. He's getting busy. So, so. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, thank you very much, guys, and hope you enjoyed it. Take care.